Hello and welcome to A Beginner's Guide to the Sabbat, a continuing podcast of sorts detailing various guides to uh, the world of darkness. So, content warning before we begin, uh, because the Sabbat is all kinds of fucked up. The Sabbat is intentionally uh, messed up in extreme ways, and if you're easily squeamish, uh, this is probably not going to be the episode for you. Uh, the Sabbat practice everything from, like, baby sacrifice to cannibalism. Uh, they are openly inhuman, and so we're probably going to have to touch on a lot of terrible things. So, you've been warned, okay? Now, in my video on the Camarilla, I kind of neglected to mention one thing. Uh, for two reasons. One, because I forgot. <laughs> and two, because I didn't really think it was all that important when talking about how to run a Camarilla game. But, one of the things about the Camarilla that's sort of paradoxical is that they actively don't believe in the founders of their own clans. That is to say that they do not believe in the Antediluvians. Which seems kind of odd, because uh, the Camarilla was founded by people who mostly could remember the Antediluvians. Uh, or at the very least, remember their children. Uh, because most of them were only a couple steps removed from the Antediluvians. So it seems kind of odd, but their line is essentially that the Antediluvians do not exist, or at the very least, uh, if they did exist, are long dead or in torpor and are never coming out. Uh, they pretty much believe the same thing about Cain. And if you're playing a Camarilla game, uh, this probably isn't a huge deal, because most Camarilla games are not about the Antediluvians. It's not really front and center to most uh, storyteller stories, or most interactions uh, with players. Your average, like, 11th gen gangrel is probably not, you know, thinking about, oh, I wonder what Malkav is doing. I wonder what Ventru was up to. I wonder if one day Toreador is going to wake up and kill everybody. It's not a thing that most Camarilla vampires think a whole lot about. For good and for ill, really. Uh, but there are lots of vampires who actively think about the Antediluvians and about Cain, and uh, we're going to talk about them today. But before I can do that, I have to get into a little bit of backstory. We have to get into a little bit of lore uh, to explain the Sabbat and where they come from, because the Sabbat are formed uh, directly in contrast to the Camarilla. So if you've watched that video, you basically already know the backstory, but... To give you the cliff notes of the cliff notes version, in the world of darkness, the burning dimes, as vampires call them, the Inquisition, was every bit as terrible, and more so, uh, as the people being burned would have you believe. Uh, most people imagine the Inquisition to have burned millions upon millions of people. Their are images uh, that you've probably seen or can conjure in your mind are of entire cities being wiped out, uh, of the Inquisition torturing everybody that they can get their hands on, uh, and this simply did not happen in real life. The amount of people who the Inquisition uh, killed, captured, tortured, etc. is somewhere between 30,000 and 300,000 across all of Western Europe. Uh, not the millions and millions that most people imagine. Uh, in the World of Darkness, millions and millions of people uh, <laughs> got burned by the Inquisition. The Inquisition in the World of Darkness is essentially as bad as all of the people who were being burned depicted it as. It is a monstrous force that swept across Europe uh, and basically went after every like supernatural being that you can conjure in your head. And this scared the shit out of most vampires, because lots of them 
uh, met their final deaths. These are very old, powerful beings, many of which had been around for thousands of years in some cases, uh, were just powerless before the Inquisition. At the same time, this led to lots of younger vampires who were not exactly happy to be sacrificed by their elders to try to save their own skins. Uh, they also realized that there were a lot more uh, younger vampires, and lots of them had been denied uh, power and status because of their age. Now today, they, these same vampires would be over a thousand years old, but at the time, they were neonates, they were younglings, pretty much facing an eternity of being under the thumb who spoke languages that no one spoke, uh, and revered civilizations that no longer existed, or had never existed in the minds of mortals to begin with. So begins the Anarch. It is a bloody war that lasts about 70 years or so, uh, on top of the Inquisition. And at the end of it all, the elders essentially pool together their resources and manage to stave off the threat. They then establish the Camarilla, and they reassert the primacy of the six traditions that Cain had originally given all of his kids, and said, hey, these are the rules, and you're all going to follow them. The Camarilla is formed of seven main clans. Uh, and you may remember way back in my Beginner's Guide to Vampire that there are 13 clans, which means a number of them were not included. Because uh, they either weren't invited, or actively refused uh, to be a part of this. And the two main clans who refused to be a part of the Camarilla are the La Sombra and the Sirmitsi. I'm just going to call them the Fiends, because I have no idea how to pronounce them. I've looked up how you're supposed to pronounce them, uh, and it doesn't really help. It, uh, you pronounce it with Z-U-H sound, which I don't know how any human makes, or a Z-H-I sound, neither of which... I think, are sounds in English. Uh, certainly not any word that I can think of. Uh, so I'm just going to call them the Fiends, because that's what pretty much everyone thinks of them as. That's their nickname. That's what everyone knows. Anyway, these two clans, essentially all of the defectors uh, from all the other clans, form the Sabbat. The Sabbat is... Everything that the Camarilla is not. Uh, if the Camarilla is intended to be subtle and hide the existence of vampires, uh, the Sabbat exists to be overt and essentially to revel in their power. The Sabbat believe uh, essentially in vampire supremacy. They believe that vampires are naturally superior to mortals, that mortals have no rights, and should actively bow down before vampires. Um, the other thing that's kind of important is that the Camarilla have a path called humanity. Uh, and I didn't really go into that because I didn't think it was really all that important to talk about paths when we're talking about a beginner's guide, uh, especially because every vampire in the Camarilla is on the path of humanity which is a set close or far away from being human, are you? Okay? Um, the Sabbat, on the other hand, completely reject their humanity and possess a number of other paths to containing their beasts. Uh, many of which are actively, I guess you could say barbaric. Uh, some might call them psychopathic <laughs> because they actively revel in things like violence and brutality. They are things that cannot exist uh, alongside humans, basically. The other thing is that on top of being vampire supremacists, uh, the Sabbat are essentially a religion. They are fanatics, uh, because the Sabbat are literally called the Sword of Cain. Um... And if you listen to them, what they say is that Cain is going to come back and 
he's going to look at all of the Sabbat and say, you are now my army, and let's go kill the Antediluvians at the end times. Uh, if you want to think a little bit about, say, Norse mythology and the concept of Valhalla, this is basically that sort of thing. Except instead of being in some unknowable afterlife with gods, it involves Cain uh, and it being on Earth. So the Sabbat preach to all of their members, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to fuck everything up, and then Cain's going to come back, uh, and then he and us are going to go fuck up the Antediluvians, who are the third generation who spawned all of us, uh, and that's what's going to be at the end times. And then I guess everything is going to be great. I don't know. Uh, it's unclear, but the Savant firmly believe in the Antediluvians, whereas uh, the Camarilla actively tried to cover up the fact that they ever existed. It's worth noting that the Sabbat have a point. They're psychotic and insane, but they do have somewhat of a point, which is that the Antediluvians do exist. Uh, obviously, because all the vampires came from somewhere, but what I mean is they still exist on Earth. Many of them are not destroyed. Many of them still exist uh, and are in torpor. And in the game's lore, at least one of them has woken up. So, if around to covering individual clans uh, and get to the Ravnos, uh, essentially, Ravnos, the antediluvian of that clan, wakes up in northern India and immediately sets about uh, enforcing his will upon the surroundings. Uh, he starts inverting reality, massacring mortals and immortals alike. Uh, he essentially goes out of control and drinks the blood of basically every everything that has blood in it. <laughs> every vampire, every mortal, just starts depopulating the area. Absolutely goes wild. Uh, it is so bad that the mages of the world take notice that there's this insane immortal creature uh, fucking everything up and nuke him from orbit with like a space laser. <laughs> they essentially, in order to destroy Ravnos, uh, they take the sun with a laser beam and just sort of drop the sun on him in order to destroy him. And this results in the destruction of many Ravnos in the clan who just immediately go insane um, or die immediately when their founder goes insane. Uh, so yeah, the, the Saban has a point is that the Antediluvians, A, exist, and B, uh, if they ever wake up, are not going to be too happy that every vampire on the planet is kind of hiding from the mortals that they're supposed to rule. Oops. Uh, so there's that. The problem, of course, is that the Saban are completely and totally psychotic. <laughs> they are fucked up beyond belief. They actively revel in their inhumanity. Uh, and in many ways, they are protected by the traditions that they themselves do not enforce. See, the Camarilla are so focused on preserving the masquerade they go so far as to kind of cover up the Sabbat, and that means that the Sabbat can kind of rely on the fact that the Camarilla are going to go out of their way to try to hide the Sabbat's actions, which is of much amusement to the Sabbat, who actively revel in the fact that they're inhuman monsters. Like, the Sabbat do not care about doing things like displaying uh, various vampiric disciplines in public. They don't care about actively feeding on people. They don't care about, like, causing massive amounts of destruction. They don't care about engaging in the most inhuman of acts. Because, to them, the traditions uh, are all bullshit. And vampires are above that. Because, again, they're vampire supremacists. Now, you're thinking to yourselves, okay... 
So there's antediluvians. They definitely exist. So the Sabbat have a point. So that means that all the stuff they're doing is in preparation to fight their own antediluvians, right? Because both the Fiends and La Sombra ostensibly have their own antediluvians, right? Well, no, because to them, they're pretty certain they've already destroyed their antediluvians. Um, by the time that the Sabbat is founded, both of them basically are of the opinion that they've either A, uh, destroyed them, or B, have injured them to the point where they will never come back anyway. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of other things to it, but essentially they're preparing to fight all of the other antediluvians. It also means uh, that they attract, how do I put this, the worst vampires? Like, the people who end up in the Sabbat uh, are the ones who basically cannot function in Camarilla society. Now, Camarilla society is pretty open to you being a monster, so long as you, like, cover it up real well. Uh, so if you end up in the Sabbat from the Camarilla, it's probably because uh, you're a psychopath. Um, to give you a short example of this, the Malkavians in the Camarilla are often considered to be crazy, uh, but even among the Malkavians in the Camarilla, the ones in the Sabbat are considered to be magnitudes worse. Like, for every dude who ends up embraced and becomes, like, a megalomaniac, manic-depressive, or whatever, you end up with somebody in the Sabbat who is, like, a cannibal or a rapist or like just like masochistic or sadistic or both you end up with some really messed up people and the sabbat are all too happy to let you do whatever you want to do because again you're a vampire and as long as you're not fucking with any other vampire that's stronger than you uh go crazy basically from there, we have to talk about, okay, where are the Sabbat? Because obviously Europe, for the most part, is the domain of the Camarilla, right? Yes and no. So, the Sabbat's territorial uh, claims, traditionally, are Spain and Eastern Europe. And that's because the La Sombra and the Fiends each traditionally existed in those areas. So, for example, the La Sombra before the Sabbat ruled over most of Spain. Uh, the Fiends mostly before the Sabbat ruled over Eastern Europe. And once the Sabbat was formed, they just sort of kept those areas. But the place where most of the, the magic happens, where most of the violence uh, and craziness happens, is in the Americas. Because while the Camarilla can claim to control a lot of major cities in the United States, and some in Canada, uh, almost all of Latin America and South America is run by the Sabbat. <laughs> the Sabbat run Mexico, essentially. And, in fact, their headquarters was in Mexico City for, like, two centuries or something. Now, it's worth noting that if you're the kind of person who's like, well, they sound pretty evil, which side of the American Civil War were they on? I think you can imagine. Okay, the Sabbat actively supported uh, the South, and that's because uh, the idea of running massive slave pens, which the Sabbat do anyway, appeals to them, and the idea of being able to do so openly appealed to them even more. In fact, their plan was, essentially, once the South wins and we can establish slave pens everywhere... We're just going to put all of the humans in that kind of situation. Uh, that was their hope. So you can imagine they lost that particular fight, thankfully. But that's the sort of people you're... Okay, you're dealing with people who are actively... Uh, how do I put this? I don't want to say amoral. They're not really... Like, they're immoral. But, like, they're actively believing in 
what we would consider like the opposite of morality. Like, in some ways, they're kind of almost cartoon villain esque evil, or what we would call like horror movie esque evil. Um, and as you can imagine, probably, the Sabat is not particularly stable. Okay, like politically speaking, uh, it's not politically like stable or functional. Uh, it has hierarchy, and it's generally like the strongest lit survive, uh, and the rest die. Uh, if you can force everybody else to do what you want, you're basically in charge. This up by a religious system uh, that gives legitimacy to whoever's in charge or strong. Uh, there's been a number of civil wars uh, in the Sabbat because each time somebody gets strong enough, they're like, Oh, I'm just going to take control of the whole thing. <laughs> and yeah, it, it, it's usually extremely bloody and extremely violent. So about all this, let's get into like you play a Sabbat vampire. How do you run a Sabbat game? So, I think honestly, if you want to talk about the best way to run a Sabbat game, the themes that you want to, like, highlight, I would say contradictions are the best way to do it. Now, you can absolutely run a game where everybody's a psychopath and the players indulge in their most obscene fantasies, but that's usually not a lot of fun. And it also attracts a lot of edgelords who you absolutely do not want in your game, okay? Even more so than the Camarilla, uh, the Sabbat games attract uh, the worst sorts of people, and you kind of have to be aware of them. I've already kind of talked about that uh, in both my guide to the World of Darkness more generally and in my guide to uh, Vampire more generally. So you probably don't want to just run a game where everybody's a psychopath. And to avoid that, the way that I like to run games, or I should say the way that I like to play in games, is to highlight the inconsistencies of the Sabbat. Because the Sabbat is kind of constantly at war with itself in terms of like what it believes. And what I mean is this. The Sabbat is ostensibly preaching anarchy and total freedom. It essentially preaches that if you're strong enough to do whatever you want then you shouldn't listen to anyone, and no one should have control over you. And yet, at the same time, it has a structure that is church-like in the way that it's set up. So, for example, most cities don't have princes, they have, like, bishops, who are presiding over religious rites over the Sabbat, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense when you're preaching freedom. The Sabbat do not believe ostensibly, in the blood bond. Uh, and the blood bond, which I don't think I've ever explained up to this point, um, is a connection between vampires. Ostensibly, if you drink the blood of another vampire, you become blood-bound to them. And the more you drink, the more often you drink, the greater the power of this other vampire over you. And this is usually how elders control their children, by having very strong blood binds on their children. The Sabbat are like, blood bounds are uh, immoral, and you should never do them, and we're going to break them. And then also have rituals where everybody becomes blood bound uh, to whoever is the strongest, by all putting their blood into a communal cup and drinking it. <laughs> so... On one hand, they're like, bloodbounds are anti-freedom and are bad. On the other hand, they're like, okay, one of our main rituals is all becoming bloodbound to whoever runs the city. <laughs> so you can see this is kind of like a contradiction. There's also the matter of, like, the elders of the Sabbat essentially tell everybody, hey, don't make any trouble that you yourself can't handle. Because obviously, you know, they don't care very much about the masquerade, but they also don't particularly want mortals to, like, 
destroy them before they're ready. Like, the problem is, is that the doctrine of the Sabbat is you are superior to mortals, you should rule openly, you should, like, not care about what anyone knows about you. If the mortals know about you, all the better, because they should be terrified of you. And you exist to tear down the Camarilla, to destroy the Elders, and essentially rule the world. Meanwhile, on top of that, most bishops spend their time trying to keep Sabat in line so that they don't do something like reveal themselves on national television to the world, or get the army sent in to destroy them, or, I don't know, start another Inquisition or something. Like, you end up with this weird contradiction where all of the younger, more radical, more extreme Sabat who are raised on a diet of yeah, you're monsters, and fuck yeah, you're monsters, uh, you should go out and fuck everything up, then have to be told, uh, well, okay, don't fuck everything up that much, because we don't want everyone to get destroyed by, you know, all of the mortals that exist. Because that would be bad. So you can see that there's, like, a lot of weird contradiction. It's also kind of like a gang, in the sense that, like, the Sabbat spends a lot of time fighting among themselves about who is actually a Sabbat member. Like, these are people who, despite the fact that they believe in freedom, spend a whole lot of time fighting amongst each other over who is the most like Cain, who is the most Sabbat-like, who is a member of the Sabbat in the truest sense of the word. Like, who is the most... Like, imagine... I guess the best way to put it is it's like it's like the goth kids from South Park almost where they're like which one of us are the most nonconformist <laughs> we're, we're all we're all conforming to nonconformism which one of us is the least conformist that's kind of the sabbat in a nutshell like that's what you should probably think of when you run a game when you're a part of a game and along with the concept of, oh, we're all nonconformists together, despite the fact that we all dress the same and all believe the same things, they come up with all kinds of weird nonsense the same way gangs do. So, Sabbat members all have gang signs uh, or symbols that they all wear. Uh, different packs all run with, like, their own gang colors. Uh, they come up with all these weird initiations and, like, rites that they do amongst each other. Um... They find weird ways to test each other. On a regular basis, spend their time challenging each other to prove who is most, like, deserving to lead, using the stupidest and weirdest ways possible. Um, depending on how you run a game, depends on how dark this can get. Um, among the fiends, uh, they regularly do, like, vicissitude or flesh crafting, competitions to see which of them is the most disturbed or the most artistic. It's uh, pretty weird, um, but also it's kind of like, I don't know, I guess it's very 80s. It's very of the time and when this was written. Think of like Mad Max, okay? Like, imagine if you put the Mad Max, like, war boys in, like, normal world's conditions, and that's basically the Sabbat. That's how they all do things. Um, these are people who are, like, deeply, deeply disturbed, but also extremely needy. Like, these are vampires who spend all of their time fighting over, like, fake toughness points with each other about who is the most nonconformist or who is the most real uh, it's very real world, almost, if you want to think of it that way. And that can almost be more fun to run, like, a Sabbat game like that, where all of the members of your party are, like, all fake, but they all claim that they're real. Like, if you don't want to run a Sabbat game that is, like, overly, uh, I guess the right word would be, like, sadistic, or cruel, or monstrous. You could just run it like a reality show, full of, like, people who really are into, like, goth fashion. Like, imagine the real world, except it stars the war boys 
uh, from Mad Max. <laughs> like, that is, that's essentially what the Sabbat is. But let's circle back around really quickly. Because I mentioned earlier that the Sabbat, despite having a hierarchy, doesn't really have a hierarchy beyond who is the strongest. And essentially, the Sabbat preaches that you should be able to take whatever it is that you can take. And it's up to you to keep it. Like, unlike the Camarilla, where there's like this very rigid hierarchy where everybody knows who's in charge, everybody knows who has what position. The Sabbat is fluid in the sense that if you can destroy another vampire and drink their soul, absolutely go and do it. If you think you can do it and get away with it, absolutely go and do it. <laughs> uh, there is no one who's going to help you, though. Uh, essentially, it is everybody against everybody else. It is all versus all in the Sabbat. Uh, now, occasionally you do end up with packs or groups of vampires who all believe the same thing, but by and large, the Sabbat kind of fosters this sort of individualist streak where every dog eats another dog, and the only way you're going to advance is if you're willing to, like, rip somebody else's heart out. <laughs> but, because people who made the Sabbat realized that, like, you can't just have chaos. Like, there has to be some kind of order, there has to be some kind of rule in place to ensure that, like, everybody knows what's going on. Like, sure, most vampires just go out and destroy each other, but that's not a good way to, like, get respect or convince anyone else to follow you. And so there are various tools available to the Sabbat vampire, which allows them to sort of declare themselves as a candidate, I guess you could say, for advancement. And much like the Norse, who I mentioned earlier, the way in which this is normally done in the Sabbat is through the rite of monomancy. Monomancy is just a one-on-one -on -one fight, essentially. Uh, that's really it. Essentially, monomancy works by a circle is drawn, everybody gets together and watches two guys duke it out to the death. Or, at the very least, until one surrenders or is defeated. And then they are at the mercy of the victor, basically. So than any other rite, monomancy is considered to be sacred. Okay, monomancy is considered official, in a sense. Anyone can declare monomancy against someone else at any time, okay? No matter what, basically. Um, the amount of times that you cannot declare monomancy can probably be counted on one hand. And so when you're playing the game, keep that in mind, that if you think you're tougher than somebody the storyteller... Uh, has put forth, your player characters can absolutely declare monomancy and say, I'm going to kick your ass and take everything you have. You can do that. That's, like, built into the way the Sabbat functions. Now, as you can imagine, uh, you might not want to do that as a player. <laughs> Most vampires don't just want to declare monomancy on a whim because absolutely the guys who are in power got there through monomancy. Okay, they got to where they are because they killed every single person who opposed them up until that point. So everybody who's in control, everybody who has a seat of power, everybody who has any kind of authority is only in that position because they are the baddest motherfuckers who have ever walked the earth, essentially. So if you roll into a city and you find the priests there, the priests are only priests and only command everybody else because they killed everybody else who had the job before them or who challenged them for that job. Okay, so that should probably keep most people in line. Now, it is said uh, that the Samat are not all extreme about this. 
because there are times when you can't declare monomancy, as I said. Um, and I think... I'm not sure. So basically, I think the only times that you can't declare monomancy in the Sabbat are when there's like a blood hunt going on, meaning the priest or the bishop or whoever has declared that X person needs to be destroyed. And I'm pretty sure you can't declare monomancy while that's going on. I'm also pretty sure that when, like, Sabbat High Command goes, okay, we're gonna go on crusade, and we're gonna go take over a city, you're not allowed to declare monomancy until that city is taken. I think. I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to declare monomancy while you're still fighting for a city, so that neonates don't just, like, spend all their time trying to fight their leaders over, like, who gets to decide where they attack. I think. I'm not entirely certain about that, so don't take my word on that part as being law. So let's kind of move on from that. Look about, like, what is, like, the secret sauce to the Sabbat? Because obviously if they were just psychotic monsters uh, with a religion, they wouldn't have lasted so long. Or gain so many followers. And the main boss is basically the fact that it's a religion. <laughs> like, the fact that they consider their sect to be essentially religious in nature is what keeps everybody together. So, the, the Sabbat can be chaotic and violent and anarchic, but in some ways they are much more structured than the Camarilla is, because they all have the same doctrine. They all believe the same thing, basically. Uh, unlike the Camarilla, which is a lot of different clans and voices and belief systems ruling over their own fiefdoms, the Sabbat all believe in the doctrine of the Sabbat. The Sabbat all believe in the cause, essentially. These are all, you know, militant, violent individuals who engage in various acts, uh, and rituals to go along with their religion and their belief system, and this fosters a kind of, I don't want to say solidarity, but it, it fosters a kind of, like, brotherhood, I guess you could say. Because the ones that survive pretty much all believe strongly in the cause. You really only end up with uh, guys who support you know, the cause of the Sabbat. You don't really, all the guys who don't end up dead. So by the time you end up with, you know, older vampires, any vampire who survives, like, more than five years is probably surrounded by guys who also survived those five years and have been through all the same shit. And so you end up with almost, like, a military unit level of camaraderie between Sabbat members. Of course, as I've said, everything else about the Sabbat uh, still applies. So yeah, you might all be, like, tight, and you might all believe in the same thing, but that's not going to stop you from shanking the guy next to you if you think it's going to advance your cause. <laughs> okay? This is, like, imagine, like, military units made up of psychopaths, essentially. Like, we're talking things like uh, the Expendables, essentially. You end up with this team of, like, hardcore, powerful vampires who also hate each other <laughs> and spend all of their time wondering when they're going to get the like the go ahead to kill the next per like the person next to them that's the sabbat okay so now that i've talked about let's say you're a player and you want to make a sabbat vampire how do you join the sabbat because in my camarilla video i mentioned that to the camarilla every vampire is a member of the camarilla just by existing Okay, if you exist and follow the rules of the Camarilla, you're a member of the Camarilla, and they claim dominion over you. The Sabbat are much more picky, I guess you could say. Uh, it's more that you can't just join the Sabbat. Okay, you have to prove that you're a member of the Sabbat. Like I said earlier, it's a lot like a gang. <laughs> okay, you can't just roll, like, roll up and be like, Oh, I want to be a part of your blood cult. No, you have to, like, prove yourself to Sabbat. And most members of the Sabbat are born into the Sabbat. 
okay? Most members of the Sabbat do not come from outside. Most of them are embraced by other Sabbat vampires and then prove themselves uh, through various acts. Um, this is done through a number of different ways. Uh, most vampires are given things like the creation rites, uh, but more often than not, the way in which you become Sabbat is you survive. Now, as I said earlier, the Sabbat spend a lot of time arguing amongst themselves about who is really Sabbat. Who is the most uh, representative of the core ideals of the Sabbat? Only done among members who are already initiated. This is among the quote unquote true Sabbat. Uh, and what that means is that you have uh, managed to survive whatever nonsense came before it and has brought uh, to the sect. Now, if we're talking about a wartime game, like, a game in a city where, like, violence is happening, where the camera and the Sabbat are fighting nightly, the Sabbat have a way of fighting where they create shovel heads. What's a shovel head? Essentially what they do is they try to mass embrace new vampires who are not considered vampires by the Sabbat. Okay? They mass embrace vampires... Uh, they then throw them into a pit uh, and wait to see if any of them come up. If they do, then they beat them over the head with a shovel and then send them en masse at their enemies in a blood-hungry frenzy. Okay, that's how most Camarilla vampires think Sabbat are made. This is not the case. This is only in times of war. Outside of times of war... Uh, most Sabbat vampires are created with the same amount of, like, thought as Camarilla wants. Because the Sabbat wants to make sure that anyone that they're siring is going to be useful to the Sabbat. But it is worth noting that the Sabbat don't view shovelheads or neonate vampires who haven't undergone the rites to be actual vampires. Okay? They don't view them as, like human, essentially. They don't view them as people, okay? You are essentially an object until you've proven that you're worthy of being brought into the sect proper. Alright? So, for a shovelhead, it usually means surviving. So, if you're a player, you can kind of imagine this, where it's like, okay, it's wartime, you know, there's fighting between the Camarilla and the Sabbat. The Sabbat mass embrace a bunch of people, you among them, toss you into a hole, and your hunger causes you to claw your way out, uh, at which point you're bashed over the head with a shovel and bundled off to be sent en masse towards some haven that is controlled by a Camarilla vampire. Ostensibly, you survive. Uh, the hundreds of other people who were mass-embraced and thrown towards the enemy did not survive, but you did. And... Because you survived, you are now given the creation right, which means, congratulations, you have proven that you're strong enough, or at least have the will enough, to be a member of the Sabbat proper. That's usually not how it's done, but that's one possible way of doing it. The way it's usually done is, whatever member of the Sabbat finds somebody they think is interesting or worthy of the embrace, they are then embraced... And they kind of exist as a non-person for a time. Uh, how long that is depends on, you know, the sire and whatever city and whatever priest is going to be administering the rites. But during this time, they are not considered Sabbat. They are not even considered a vampire. Uh, after this point, uh, you need a priest, and that's the only rule. Uh, this is another situation where the actual rites uh, are decided by whoever's giving them, really. So this really opens up a lot of possibilities as players and as a storyteller. Because you get to decide how the rituals go down. How do, you know, how do your player characters become members of the Sabbat? What is the ritual like? And that will define a lot of your non-player characters as well. So it's like, okay, is this a gang initiation? Is this the kind of thing where, like, 
everybody gets together and beats the crap out of the new guy until, like, you know, they can't take it anymore or to see how tough they are before you're like, okay, you survived. Congrats, you're now a member because you went through the same hazing as the rest of us. You know, is this kind of like a frat house hazing sort of situation where you're told you have to go do a bunch of stupid, pointless tasks for the for the clan? You know, is this the kind of thing where it becomes like a religious ceremony where it's like a baptism? You know, like, are you being dipped in blood or something? You know, you can go cra- as crazy as you want with this. It can be as simple as, you know, the priest shows up and goes, congratulations, you're now a member, shakes your hand, and that's it. Or it could be as complex as, like, a month-long religious ceremony where you have to undergo all manner of torture and mutilation or something. Like, I don't know. You could get, like, an extremely fucked up individual who's like, okay, before you can become one of us, you have to go fuck that dog. And that's the kind of wild nonsense that happens in the Sabbat, okay? They may be like, okay, you have to go find somebody, and you have to romance them, and then murder them. <laughs> like, stuff like that happens in the Sabbat, okay? They want to, you know, prove that you're a member of the clan, basically. You're a member of the group. And ostensibly, this ensures that every member who becomes quote-unquote true Sabbat can't go back in the same way that gang initiations, you know, are meant so that you can't leave. Now, let's deeper into role-playing, because Sabbat games offer more freedom than Camarilla games. So in the Camarilla, one thing that's very stressed is the domain and a lot of vampires don't get to move around a whole lot. The Sabbat has actively nomadic packs, okay, of groups of vampires that have no set location and just kind of wander around, uh, like Sons of Anarchy style. Like, they get on motorcycles and they just fuck everything up across the country, and they drive around and stuff. That's one thing you can do. If you want to run a game uh, of Sabbat... Uh, where you're doing a road trip, absolutely possible, okay? If you want to run a game where, like, the Sabbat are, I don't know, weird nomads from, like, the 60s or something, and they're just, like, weird, blood-crazed psychopaths who just meander around, you can do that. You can absolutely play murder hobos if you want to. But one thing that I think is is almost more interesting, if you want to emphasize the religious nature without, like, having to write psychopaths, is have your Sabbat members be, like, inquisitors. Okay? And this might sound kind of weird, because the Sabbat is all about freedom, and it actively embraces weird psychopaths on the regular. But... That doesn't mean that they just let anybody preach whatever they want. Because as I've covered, the Sabbat believe concrete things. It is an almost religious movement. Uh, It clothes itself and its leaders in religious titles. So you can't just believe whatever you want. There are certain things which are, how should I say, off-limits, or at the very least, disqualifying. Okay, the crazy Sabbat go a little too crazy and actively start engaging in various heresies or, uh, how should I put this, uh, demon worshipping or the like, and they become major problems for the rest of the Sabbat. Because it's one thing if you have pack mates who are, you know, actively violent or unable to control their desires, it's another thing entirely if one of your packmates starts going, you know, maybe I'll sacrifice the souls of all my packmates to a demon I just found out about. You know, there's problems like that. Okay, there's also various paths uh, that members of the Sabbat go on uh, that are considered heresies by the Sabbat proper. Okay, these are basically ones that revere the Antediluvians, because of course there are paths that revere the Antediluvians, uh, 
or they, you know, preach various things that you shouldn't, you know, do. Uh, which I know sounds very vague, but the idea is basically don't worship the antediluvians. Don't try to be them. Don't try to bring them back. Don't try to become them. Don't worship... Don't obey demons. <laughs> don't swear your allegiance to them. Uh, don't try to do things that, you know, undermine the Sabbat. You know, there are various things like this. And I want to run a game that is, I guess you could say, more focused on less psychotic things, this is one way to do it, where you have your packs hunting down the worst people. Like, people who absolutely need to be dealt with because they threaten the Sabbat itself, or they're engaging in things that are considered bad by the people who are in charge. You know, that kind of thing. I mean, keep in mind, these are people who think that, you know, flesh-crafting babies together to make a Christmas tree is perfectly acceptable. So, use your imagination on what, you know, heresy might look like. Uh, obviously, there's also, you know, turncoats and, you know, things like that. Anyway, that's kind of the long and short of the Sabbat. Uh, I've tried not to focus too much on them being, like, inhuman monsters, because I don't think that makes it very easy to run or play in the games. But when most people think of the Sabbat, they think of inhuman monsters, and obviously that attracts, you know, the worst people, as I said, so watch out for that. Uh, I recommend not starting with Sabbat games, running or playing them, uh, if you've not run in a Camarilla game before, because Camarilla games are much easier to date, like to deal with. Um, and that's really it. That's all I can really say about the Sabbat. Or that's really all I can, like, all the advice I can give you in order to, like, help you along. Um, yeah, good luck. If you're, if you're going to do a Sabbat game, good luck is the best thing I can say. Because it's much harder than doing a... Uh, a Camarilla game, and it's a lot easier to end up in a situation where you're just not having fun, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, I will see you all next time.